okay we've got some things to do in this video and that is to find the MGF of a burn binomial distribution I'm gonna do this proof two ways one directly from the definition and one shorter way I think using its relationship to the Bernoulli second we use MGF to compute the mean and the variance and again I'm gonna do it two ways first I'm gonna use the MGF and second I'm going to use a related function to the MGF um, I'm going to work with the log of the MGF to compute these two things the log of the MGF is called a cumulant generating function right so we get begin with the MGF the proof of the MGF method one I'm going to do it directly from the definition so the moment generating function is by definition the expected value of this function of x expected value of tx because x is binomial it is discrete so we sum the possible outcomes for um, a discrete for a binomial is um, 0 successes out of n trials up to n and what we've got then is e to the tx times and then the probability mass function of the uh, so let's just put that in so this is the formula so this is what I've got to substitute now for this thing which is a binomial probability mass function which if you look it up in your formula sheet or it might be just given to you in an exam or you have to memorize it, it looks like this so this uh, x number of successes number of failures I call it 1 minus p yep. n minus x number of failures okay now what do we do we're gonna use something called the binomial series or binomial theorem which I'm going to state in a moment in a particular case for this example right what we can see is that we've got powers of x here this is et to the power of x we could say that and we could see that this is power of x as well so we can group those two together why I'm doing that is because I'm heading towards I'm thinking in my mind that I want to apply the binomial series so e to the t p x right this means that I take x through the bracket so that's going to be e t x which is that and then p x times 1 minus p n minus x now let's state because this is the form now that we can apply one form I should say one form of the binomial binomial series or binomial theorem here it's got several forms. The one we want is that it sums from 0 to n. The other forms we could talk about zero, summing from 0 to infinity. Okay, so we have this. Anything that looks like this. To the x. Um, say z to the n minus x is equal to y plus z to the n to the power of n right for any real numbers y z any real numbers and n is a integer bigger than zero okay if you're interested in proving this you think about something like a Taylor expansion of this guy here right so if we have a look at what we've got we can kinda see that what we've got is that this is my y that's my z All right, and then it's in the same form so I just write it in Actually, I don't have enough to write it in. Just say that by binomial, that binomial theorem, this expression, what we're going to get is open bracket, that's my y. This bit is my z. N. And we're not got any fractions here, so this function is for any t on the real line.
That's method one. And method one relied on us being able to know this result here, the binomial series or binomial theorem, one form of it. Okay, let's do method two. This second method is the way I like to kind of see it because it helps me connect it up to another distribution. We, let's say this, x is a Bernoulli distribution, Bernoulli trial, parameter p. We call it a Bernoulli trial is one where you have a trial and it has one of two outcomes, success or failure. Then this is the definition. A binomial distribution, a random variable y, which is made up of some of independent Bernoullis, is a binomial distribution. Because recall that a binomial, uh, let's kind of uh, just kind of step back a bit. A binomial, when we're looking at binomials, we're interested in the number of successes out of n trials, specifically n independent trials. So if you think about it, Bernoulli and binomials are related. Binomials are just counting up the number of successes across the trials. But each trial is Bernoulli. See, so that's why I said that basically a binomial is just adding up the number of success Bernoulli outcome of Bernoulli trials. Okay, so y, which equals x1 plus x2 plus blah 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 blah, where each of these xi's are independent Bernoulli's, gives a gives y, which is going to be binomial, of n trials, it's got a parameter p, success. So let's look at it again. So in short, I'm just saying that Binomial is basically a sum of n independent Bernoullis. Independent here meaning that the outcome of in one trial does not affect the outcome, the result in another trial. Okay, that's very useful. This is very useful because you'll see later it helps us to compute the expected value of um, binomial very, very easily using the expectation operator rules and also the variance. Okay, well. So that's the results. How do I apply it? Well, to apply it, I need to know this other result that the MGF of a sum of n independent trials is going to be the product of the MGFs of each of these guys. So let's just state let's just state that. In fact, people write it as a theorem, right? But I'm going to write all the details down. So these xi guys, they're independent. And they each have a particular MGF, say M subscript X now to, to, to say that what the MGF is. Then for the sum of these guys, the MGF of the new guy is equal to the product of the MGFs of the little guys. All right, so let's put i here to denote so that specific i, so that'll be x1 t, mx2 t, mxn t, like so. Very useful result. Very useful because it kind of it provides a simple way, often provides a simple way if, it, if we can actually apply this to compute MGFs of sums of random variables. Okay, an alternative way to computing. Okay, yeah, okay, that's enough. All right, so let's actually apply the thing. Well, we've shown in the previous um, video that the MGF for Bernoulli is 1 minus P plus p e to the t. Once you've kind of seen this proof, you, you can see it's something you can do in your head, right? Okay, the, notice I dropped the subscript, I dropped the subscript 1, 2, 3 and so on because all these Bernoullis 
are the same probability. Success. Okay. So I could have yeah, I could have said they're independent identically distributed. Alright, therefore we just say that MYT, which is the MGF of a binomial, is just this guy. MGF of one of these guys, but multiplied n times. Now, what I'm saying here is not times n. That's not what this is saying. It's saying this thing times itself, times itself, times itself, n times. So that same is saying to the power of n, raised to the power of n, done. So this proof didn't rely on knowing the binomial f f series, but does ha use two kind of useful results that we have to apply again and again. First is that it gives us a relation. We need to use a relationship between a binomial and a Bernoulli. Okay, so it gives us a diff um, more succinct definition of a binomial. Binomial being the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials. Full stop. Second thing we have. To other result we use is we use that fact that the um, MGF of a sum of independent and variables is going to just be the product of the individual MGFs. Good, so that's done and what remains now is to use the MGF however we proved it, method 1 or method 2 to compute the mean and variance and for that I'm going to do it two ways one directly by differentiating set t to 0 secondly doing something similar but using a modified function using the log and I'll show you how that works